Hello, 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 hello. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Equip for Destiny Church, where we are equipping progressive minded people for destiny. We're so glad to have you with us today. And we want you to know that no matter who you are, no matter where you are, across the length, the breadth, the depth of this nation, we say welcome to you. Welcome to the Equip, to Equip for Destiny Church family. We welcome each and every one of you. And so I want you to know that you're not here today uh, by happenstance, but you're here today, amen, by the divine providence of the Lord, that God has just saw, have saw, uh, God has just so determined that you and I would meet together, amen, that, that together through our own mutual faith that we may lift up the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I just want to welcome you for being here today. I'm just so happy to be with you today and uh, just so uh, excited about the word that God has for us today. Uh, if you're new with us today, will you do us a favor? Will you uh, just let us know where you're watching from, um, um, what uh, city, what state that you're meeting with us uh, from? We have the blessed, uh, we are blessed to be able to uh, uh, worship with people, man, all across this globe. We have people, man, all across the United States that meet, meets with us uh, here on Sunday. You may be watching us by replay, or you may be watching us from the podcast, or wherever it is, we want you to know that we are so happy to have you with us today. Amen? All right, praise the Lord. And also, I, I pray that you, if you haven't already done so, uh, I'm sure there's somewhere uh, in the uh, comments that there's an opportunity for you to sow and to give. I pray that you'll consider giving and sowing a seed uh, to this ministry. Uh, it helps us do what God has called us to do. It helps us to be the church that God has called us, amen, to be. It helps us to, amen, uh, to uh, achieve the mandate that God has placed on this ministry. So we just thank you so much, and we thank you in advance for your giving. If you haven't done so already, you can do that in the comments, or you can go to our website at equipfordestiny.org and give. All right. Praise the Lord. So glad to have you with us today. All right. So I want to just go ahead and jump into the word today. Um, man, I tell you, uh, I have <laughs> I have been trying to preach this message for some time. Uh, and sometimes God gives me a word and he doesn't always give me a release uh, to preach it. Uh, but God gave me uh, a release to preach this word. And today we want to talk about you have to say something. Amen. You've got to say something. So let's look very quickly in the book of Romans. Amen. The book of Romans uh, chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8. And we're going to read from verses 28 through 31. Amen. Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 28. And we're going to read through verse number 31. I'm reading from the New King James Version. You may be reading from some other translation, but we will arrive at the same destination. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 31. And thus reads the word of the Lord. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? Oh my God, can I say that again? What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, amen, who can be against us? Can I just, verse number 31, just one more time for emphasis. The word says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, Amen. Praise God. Who can be against us? Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just bless you today. We just worship you. We just honor you. We just lift you up. Lord God, we know that you're God all by yourself. And God, we just thank you that you're almighty. God, you're sovereign God. You're omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. You know everything. You're in every place and you got all power in your hands. And Father God, we come to you, God, this morning through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, God's been shed abroad, oh God, through the Holy Spirit's been given unto us. It's through his blood we have access to your presence, oh God. Bless us as we incline our ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, what it's saying to us individually and collectively. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let us all say amen, amen, amen. And if you receive that amen, will you just put an amen in the chat? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so I want to talk to you today about you have to say something. You have to say something. And so as I, as I have been reading 
uh, oh my God, this this uh, uh, selection of scripture, I've, I've probably been reading this for over 20 years. Um, uh, Romans 8.28 is the scripture of my household, of my home, my wife and I. Uh, Romans 8.28 is a scripture by which we, we land on just about all things. Um, but then as Paul goes through this, uh, this, this uh, eight chapter of Romans, and, and, and if I could just parenthetically say to you that uh, I, I think there's a lot of the, the Bible that speaks to me and, and it move my, moves my heart, but, but, but there's something about the Romans, the eight chapter, that just for me personally, uh, I find myself, I find my life in this, in this chapter, but in this eighth chapter of Romans, and, and I suggest that you read it in your entirety, in, in your uh, opportunity for your own personal study. There's so much there. It's just pregnant with, uh, with truth and richness. But as we go through this Romans 8, we come here to this statement that Paul makes in verse number 28 when he says, For we know all things work together for the good of them who love God. And to those who are called according to his purpose. And as Paul goes through to explain to us about God's foreknowledge and his predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. He arrives at verse number 31. And it is in first verse number 31 that that has given me a perplexing question. That for years I've pondered and studied and pondered and studied. What then, Bishop, is the perplexing question? In verse number 31, he says to us, he says, What then shall we say to these things? Now, my problem with this question is, one, I've always wanted to know, did, did Paul mean to us? That when he says, what then shall we say to these things? Was this a rhetorical question? Was, was Paul simply saying this? Was he simply asking this question with the intent to produce or to prod thought within us? Or was this a literal question? Or is there a literal response? To this question, when he says to us, then what then shall you say to these things? Is Paul expecting us to have an answer? Oh, my God. And, 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 and I've often, as I've looked at this text, wanted to know are we are to literally say something. Is there is there something that we are supposed to say? And if we are to say something, then to whom should we say it to? Can you say amen to this? Ah, uh, hope up, Holy Ghost. I feel like preaching today. And so, and so it brings us then to verse number 29. If, I, if you could just give me some time, let me, let me work this text. And so in verse number 29, the Bible says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. It's in your Bible if you hadn't tore it out. He says that we might be the firstborn, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And so what Paul then gets us to understand as we look at verse number 29, he explains to us, watch this now, that one, we are foreknown. Can you say that word with me? Foreknown. Meaning that God was aware of us, amen, and loved us before. Before we even existed. Oh no, that's going to mess you up right there. Uh-huh. Just stay with me, beloved. He foreknew us. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word says in Psalm number 139 that in my mother's womb you fashioned me and your hand covered me. And I want you to know that before your parents became the progenitors of your existence, God already had you in mind. You ought to say amen right there. Praise the Lord. He already had you in mind. He had already declared his love. So the word says we are foreknown. And then he says we are predestined. Somebody say predestined. 
And so that word predestined means that not only did he have an awareness of us, and not only did he love us beforehand, the word says, amen, that he chose us in him before we ever existed. Oh, my God. I could just go home right there. I could just get a benediction and go to the house. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Bible declares, watch this now, that God foreknew us. Amen. He was aware of us and declared his love for us, and he has predestined us even before we even came into the earth. Oh, my God. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. And then he says, watch this now. He says, all of this, amen, was so that we would be, here's the word, conformed to the image of Christ. Can I stay right there for a minute? And what that word conformed means, it means molded. It means Fashioned. It means, amen, to be worked. It means, it means, amen, to, to, to come, amen, to a place where God is shaping us. Oh, hold me up, Holy Ghost. And so a mold is a template. Can you say amen to this? Uh, uh, it, 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 I, I, I like to watch this show that, uh, called uh, How Is It Made? And it's a show that shows you uh, how these everyday things that you really don't take no thought about how they're made. It shows you how uh, these these are, uh, you know, how these various things are made. And I was watching how they were how they made a car. And then I'm just sitting there watching, and then I didn't realize, amen, that much of a car starts out as raw material. Come on, talk to me, somebody. It starts out as just flat pieces of, of sheet metal. You ain't going to talk to me. And then what happens is they take this unrefined, they take this, this raw piece of, 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 of sheet metal, and they put it in a press. Y'all not going to talk to me today. And this, this flat, blank piece of sheet metal, watch this now, is then Stamped, uh oh, you're gonna get this. It is stamped into what we call a fender, or it's stamped into the roof of the car, or it's stamped into the various parts of the of the vehicle uh, 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 that's needed to make the vehicle. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now don't miss this below. You cannot make the part, you cannot transform the raw material into what's needed unless it it's put in a mold and pressure is applied. Oh my God, somebody say preach, Bishop. Somebody say pressure. And so it's the pressure that forces the raw material to conform into the shape needed, amen, to create the vehicle. You ain't gonna talk to me today. This is what I'm trying to get you to understand today. Is that as Paul is talking to us, amen, about who we are in God, he tries to get us to understand, he says that in all that God is doing, in all that God is working, his greatest intent in your life is to shape you and to mold you into the image of his son. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. And sometimes in order to get us amen into the shape, in order to get us amen um, in accordance to the mold, he has to allow some pressure. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. Amen. He has to allow pressure in our lives that shapes us and twists us and conforms us. Amen. Into that which he intended for us to be when he saw us in his mind before we were even created. Can you say amen to this? Somebody say preach bishop. Amen. So, so, so God is, he's, he's trying to get us to understand that God's working on you. That's why I want you to understand that God is working on you. God is God is pressing. He's 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 shaping. Watch this now. He's he's shaping you and he's trimming you. Amen. He's piercing you and he's doing these things in your life. Amen. That brings upon uh, pressure and hardship. Amen. And trials uh, and tribulations. Because that's the only way. Amen. That's what he uses to conform us. Somebody say conform us. Amen. Into the image. Of his son. And so I'm understanding now, as I look into this text, that when we find ourselves under the pressure, when we find ourselves under the hardship, when we find ourselves under the pain, amen, that Paul is saying to us, we must say something. That's what he says. He says, what then shall you say to these things? He says, to whom God, amen, uh, predestined, he called. Amen, for, for whom he called, the word said he justified. And whom he justified, the word said he glorified. He said, then what then shall we say to these things? So then there's something, beloved, we need to say. Come on, talk to me. 
Because what I come to realize that it's under the pressure. Amen. It's under the hardship. It's under those times when it when it seems like God is stretching you farther than you're able to be stretched. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I mean, you may feel like you're going through some things that you don't know if you can make it. You don't know if you're going to be able to get through it. You won't know, amen, how tomorrow's going to be. You, you long for yesterday. Your today just looks too different, amen, and it looks too hard to deal with. You may be going through some things, amen, that's troubling your spirit, and it can make you wonder. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. Somebody say it can make you wonder. It can make you wonder. Hardships. Amen. Difficulties. Amen. It can make you want to give up. Make you want to give out. <laughs> make you want to go back. And so what Paul was trying to get us to understand, Paul said to us, he says, don't misunderstand the pressure. Mm -hmm. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. And he says, it is in these times of pressure, you need to say something. He didn't intend for us, amen, to do it all in our minds. He didn't mean for us, amen, to just hold these thoughts in our head. He says that there literally needs to be some things that need to come out of your mouth. Oh, hold me up, Holy Ghost. Somebody said, preach, preach, Bishop. So there's something encouraging, there's something strengthening, there's something, amen, solidifying about when we allow the word of God to come out of our mouths. Romans 10, 17 says, now then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And there's something about hearing yourself, amen, say the word that encourages you. I don't know about you, I've, I've been in times in my life when I've gone through things, when I'm dealing with stuff. Amen, praise the Lord. And I've had to encourage other people. And it was in the midst of me encouraging other people. Watch this now. Amen, did I encourage myself. It was my hearing myself sing worship unto the Lord that I encouraged myself. It was in me reading my word and coming across God's word that I encouraged myself. So the Bible says then that there's times when we need to open our mouths and say something. You ain't going to help me preach today. Amen. Psalms number 107 and 2 says, watch this now. Let the redeemed of the Lord, come on somebody, say so. No, he didn't say let the redeemed of the Lord think so. He said let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Can you say amen to this? And then Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20, the Bible says, amen, that Jesus admonished us and said that if we had faith the size of the mustard seed, watch this now, he said, you can say to the mountain, he didn't say look at it, he didn't say ponder about it, he said you can say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Beloved, I want to encourage your hearts today that there are some times in your, in your life and you'll walk with the Lord when you're going to have to say some things. You're going to have to open your mouth and say some things. When you're going through pressures, when you're going through the pains, when you're going through the problems, you have to open your mouth and say some things. Can you say amen to this? And could it very well be that some of the things that we're dealing with, some of the issues that we keep falling behind, some of the stuff that keeps attacking us, some of the stuff, amen, that keeps us in misery, some of the stuff, amen, that we keep falling under, could it very well be it's because we're not saying anything. You ain't saying nothing. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't saying nothing. And yeah, You got to say something. You, you got to open your mouth and, and say something. And so, and so then it brings me then to this Question then, I said then Paul, then if it is true that we are to say something, then what is it that we ought to say? I can hear you ask the same question. Okay, then Bishop, then what do I say? Well, he tells us in verse number 30. Verse number 30, he says, Moreover, he says, whom he predestined, these he also called. And whom he called, he says, these he also justified. And whom he justified, he says, these he also glorified. In other words, Paul's trying to get us to understand. He says, he says, when you know who you are, 
When you know that you're predestined, when you know that God loves you, when you know, amen, that God had you on his mind before you even got here. And when you find yourself in hardships, when you find yourself in difficulties, when you find yourself, amen, uh, 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 so low on the, uh, underneath the bottom till you got to look up, amen, he says, that's the time when you got to say something. Can you say amen to this? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And too many times we, we allow the attack of the enemy. Because you know what the enemy wants you to do? The enemy wants you to take the pressures and confuse them for persecution. He wants you to think God is against you. He wants you to think God's trying to kill you. He's trying to get you. God's not going to show up for you. He wants you to believe God has abandoned you. But the devil is alive. There are some moments when you got to encourage yourself in the Lord and you got to say some things. Can you say amen to this? And I think that's what the prophet Joel meant. <laughs> when the Joel, prophet Joel said, amen, that the poor got to say I'm rich. See, that's some time, beloved, when you got to open your mouth and you got to confess some things. Oh, oh, it does not yet appear where we shall be. Amen. You got to look at the, th you got to have the eyes of faith to be able to look at your circumstance. And although it does not appear to be, amen, what it looks like right now, you got to open your mouth and begin to speak some stuff into the atmosphere. By your words are you justified or by your words are you condemned. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Faith, amen, comes from the heart. And if you believe God is able to turn your circumstance around, you got to open your mouth and say something. Somebody said, you got to say something. Mm, hold me up, Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, amen, and when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted, after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the word of God says, amen, that the devil showed up. And that's what the enemy does. He, he doesn't do, he doesn't cause everything in our lives, but he sure like to take the opportunity to use it. He might not have caused it, amen, but he'll sure take the opportunity to use it against you. He may not have been the one who brought it, amen, but he's going to definitely try to use it. And so while Jesus was in the wilderness, led by the Spirit of the Lord and fasting in the wilderness, he took that opportunity to come to Jesus and tempt him. And the Bible declared, that Jesus said unto him, he said, get deep behind me, Satan, for it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. Jesus opened his mouth and he said something. Can you say amen to this? Somebody say he said something. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let, let me, let me, because y'all you, you, looking at me strange. Watch this now. So things I want to bring out in this text that, that, that Paul tells us we need, we need to say something. So first of all, the text says that we are predestined and we're foreknown of the Lord. And then he said these. You hear what I'm saying? He says these he also called. So he's talking about the predestined and the foreknown. The word says these he also called. So the first thing you got to do when you find yourself, man, in trials and tribulations, when you're under persecution, pain, Amen. So you need to remind yourself, amen, I am the called of God. Can you say that with me today? I am the called of God. You need to let that come out of your mouth. I am the called of God. And so what that means is that means that God through his son has called us unto himself. That word, amen, called in the Greek is kaleo. And it means, amen, to summon. It means to name something and to summon it unto oneself. It means to call. So it means then that God called us unto himself. Can I preach today? John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so the word says God called this world unto him. He sent out the call to anyone, amen, who would receive it. He called out the world. Now, I want you to misunderstand something. Because Matthew 22 and 14 says, watch this now. He says, many are called, watch this now, but few are chosen. <laughs> Hold me up, Holy Ghost. What we're trying to get us to understand is, see, see, God made a call to everybody. 
but only those who answered are the chosen. So many are called, but what few respond to the call. And only those who respond to the call, come on somebody, has he, what has he chosen? Oh my God. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. And so, and so you have to remind yourself, watch this now. Amen. That I'm the call of the Lord. I'm the chosen. He called and I answered. I'm talking to you today. He called you and you answered. If Jesus Christ is indeed your Lord and Savior, then he called unto you and you answered. And the day that you heard his voice, you hardened not your heart, but you opened up your, your heart and said, Jesus, here I am and coming into my heart. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And become Lord of my life. He made the call. We answered. And therefore, we are the chosen. Can you say amen to this? Amen. So, and so, and so there's times when you just got to open your mouth and remind yourself, I am a child of God. Mm, can you say that with me today? That sometimes you got to, listen, sometimes you got to flat footed, stand, look at your circumstance and say, I am a child of God. You got to look, amen, the enemy in his face and say, I am, amen, the redeemed of the Lord. You got to stand and remind yourself. I wish I had some help up here today. Sometimes, amen, you even you got to remind yourself, amen, that I am the beloved of the Lord. I am saved. I, I, I am sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. I am, amen, fire baptized with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you got to remind yourself that when God allows these pressures, his intent is to shape us and to mold us and to make us into what he already knows that's in us. But he can't get what's in us out without some pressure. Y'all not going to talk to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you don't get the olive oil out of the olive unless you put it in the olive press. And some of us right now are in the midst of the pressing. Some of us right now are in the midst of the ringing. Some of us are in the midst, amen, of the pressure. And it seems like it's too much. And But you got to remind yourself that God is not pressing me to kill me. He's pressing me to get out of me what he already knows is in me. And so sometimes it takes, it takes some pressure. Can you say amen to this? Amen, that we might become what God has always intended for us to be. Can you say amen to this? Romans 8, 17 says, watch this now. He said, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. He said, but you received the spirit of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, Father. Watch this now. For the spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Watch this now. If indeed we suffer with him, then also shall we be glorified together. See, that's some things ain't going to come out to you without some suffering. I know this ain't popular Christianity. I know this is, this is not what everybody's teaching. I get it. I understand. Amen. I understand, amen, that this is not what many people want to hear in the midst of a pandemic. Bishop, you mean to tell me in the midst of the pandemic that that's all you got to tell me today? That God is pressing me? Duh, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. But there's a reason that we're going through what we're going through. See what I'm saying? Because God's trying to get something out of you. In every trial, every situation you go through, there's two things God's trying to do. There's some things God's trying to get out of you. There's some things he's trying to get in. And even in this moment, even in this pandemic, even in this, this time of uncertainty, craziness, and lunacy, God wants you to grow in the image of his son. Can you say amen to this? So you got to remind yourself, well, I am a call of God. I am a child of God. I know what it may look like, but I'm a child of God. I might be on the waters, amen, and the waters raging, but I remember I'm a child of God. I might, I mean, I may have more month than I got money, but I, I'm going to declare, amen, as the word says, let the poor say I'm rich. I know my father owns the cattle of a thousand hills. I know, amen, that he said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He said, no, I shall never leave you and forsake you. I am a child of, of God. That's what Paul, Paul wants to remind us. He says, he called you and you answered. And that you are his beloved, his royal priesthood, his own special people. Can you say that with me? I am. Somebody say, I am a chosen generation. 
I am a royal priesthood. I am a man. God's own special people. And you have to remind yourself that sometimes. So Paul says, first of all, remind yourself that you called. I am the called. Then secondly, he says, watch this now. He says, these he also justified. And so there's times in your life when you got to remember you're justified. You have to say, I am justified by faith. Can you say that with me today? I am justified by faith. Now let me tell you what that means. Let me, let me work with this for a little bit. Romans 8, 1 says, watch this now, scripture says, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now let me, let me, let me tell you why I'm dealing with this. Because justification is a legal term. And I believe that Paul knew that it is during this time of attack or during this time of pressure that the enemy would attack us. Mm. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. He, he, I, think he, I think he knew that it was going to be in these times when God's trying to do some things to us, through us, and around us, that the enemy's going to show up and start whispering in our ear. And what's the one thing that the enemy always tries to use against the beloved? He likes to make us feel condemned. Condemnation. Why is it, amen, when you begin to pray, first thing he starts whispering in your ears what you done or what you didn't do or what you were finna do or what you thought about doing. Isn't it amazing, amen, when you go before God, the first thing he starts doing, da, 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 da. does it happen to you? Maybe it's just me. Amen. Pray was just me. Maybe it's just me, the bishop. Maybe it's not any of you. Maybe it's just me. But there's times when I go before God and the first thing the enemy wants to start doing is start whispering in my ear about who I am, what I'm not, what I done, what I didn't do. And he wants to bring upon us a spirit of condemnation. So Paul wanted to remind us, watch this now, he says, not only did God call you, he said, but he justified you. Somebody said, I am, I am justified by faith. And so what that means is, watch this now, beloved, that when he says, I'm justified, meaning then, watch this now, that I've already been put in right standings with God. Mm. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. Amen. The word says, watch this. Let me take you to the Bible. Word says in Romans 5 and 1, write this down below. He says, therefore, having been justified by faith. <laughs> Hold me up, Holy Ghost. He says, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, what the enemy wants to do is... He wants you to believe that God only receives you based on how you perform. <laughs> Hold me up, Holy Ghost. And then when we don't perform, amen, and according to the letter of the word, we don't dot every I and cross every T. He then wants to make us believe that somehow or another, the love of God and the nature of our relationship with God has changed. Let me help you out here today, beloved. Let me tell you something. Sin can never change God's love for you. Sin can only change how we receive God's love for us. Can you say amen to this? Yes, it will interfere with how I receive God's love, but no, it can never change God's laws for me. Why do you know that, Bishop? Because he already said, I'm justified by faith. See, the devil wants you operating, amen, in a works mentality. Well, if I go to church, or oh, if I sing in the choir, or oh, if I do this, or oh, if I, see, you get what I'm trying to say? He's trying to get us on a works mentality that somehow or another God is going to receive our works, but you don't come to God by works. We come to God by faith. Somebody say faith. Faith, amen, that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Faith, amen, that by his blood I've been healed. Amen. Faith in the fact, amen, that my salvation is secure in the palm of his hands, and even the devil can't plug me out faith he said we're justified by faith amen through faith in Christ we have peace with God and God has declared you righteous and hold me up Holy Ghost that word declare that word justified means to be acquitted Woo! hold me up Holy Ghost y'all ain't gonna talk to me up here today amen it's, it's the judge amen smashing the gavel and declaring you not guilty 
And so when you're going through these pressures and these problems, don't let the enemy make you think God's punishing you. Mm, can I preach up here today? See, see, when we go through start trial, see, 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 listen, not only the blessing coming, we think God loved me, but then when the problems come, oh, Lord, look out what's going on. Where are you, Lord? I can't find you, Lord. What's going on? Why? Oh, Lord, it's me. Praise the Lord. But you got to understand, amen, that just because God allows problems don't mean he's punishing you. Can I preach up here today? Let me tell you something, beloved. Hear me, hear me. I pray if you don't receive nothing from this message, you get this. The reason God can never punish us for our sins is because they but one punishment for sin. That's death. The Bible said, for the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God through, uh, uh, through Jesus Christ is eternal life. God can never punish us for our sins because Jesus already took that punishment on the cross. No, what we're dealing with is the consequences of our sin, not the condemnation of our sin. And sin brings with it its own consequences. Come on, y'all. Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. Amen. No, it ain't God. that's not God doing that to you. That's us doing it to ourselves. He's already told us, amen, how that story ends. I wish I could help somebody today. He already told us, amen, we're going down that same road. Am I, talk, am I blessing anybody today? Amen, you keep going down the same road, the same way, expecting a different end result. And God says, I've already told you where that road goes. And so then God punishing us as we punishing ourselves. Why? Because as a man soweth, <laughs> so too shall he. Come on, somebody. As a man soweth, he said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. As a man soweth, so too shall he reap. So God's not punishing you. You're already justified. If you, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you're already justified by faith, and God has already declared you, amen, righteous. Can you say amen to this? Let me give you another scripture. I'm almost done. Romans chapter 3, verse number 23, 24. Watch this now. The Bible said, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No, that didn't say y'all have sinned. It said all have sinned. All of us, each and every one of us fall short of God's glory. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now watch this now. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Oh my God. Did he, did he, he said, he said telling me, amen, that I've been justified freely by his grace through the redemption, amen, that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so when, it, so when you're getting into the pressures and the problems, things happening in your life, when it seems like you think God's trying to kill you, or you think God's abandoned you, or you, are you going through so much, you're like, Lord, what else? What else can, you ever, you, you ever had seasons in your life like that? We had one problem, and then his cousin shows up. And then the cousin to the brother's problem shows up, and you just got look, look like they just they just start coming from everywhere, like 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 insects. They just they're ants. They just start coming from everywhere, and you go, Lord, what am I going to do? And even in those moments, you got to remember God's not punishing you, and that whatever God has allowed in your life, He's only trying to what He's only trying to conform us to the image of His Son. And while the enemy wants you to think God has forsaken you, have left you, you need to rebuke that and say, I am justified by faith. When he tries to bring up your past, when he tries to tell you now, see all them blessings them folks singing about, that's for everybody else in the church but you. See see how sister so and so, so I pray the Lord, amen, giving honor to God who's ahead of my life. I just want to testify about how God showed up for me and you don't feel like you have that kind of testimony and you feel like something's wrong with you and you feel like, amen, I don't see God showing up in my life. Everybody that's right here, right here getting <clears throat> new calls and I all this kind of stuff, and you don't see, you see, like God not showing up for you. Listen, repeat that in the name of Jesus, for you've been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. So it doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter where you come from, God loves you. And He does not see us, amen, in accordance to our sins, but He sees us, amen, through the blood wash cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Somebody say today, I am justified through faith. And then finally, 
Paul says there's another declaration we need to say. He said, you got to say something. You got to say something, right? I am, I am called, amen, by God. I am justified, amen, by, by faith. And then he tells us, amen, that we're also glorified with Christ. Look what he says. He says, these he also glorified. And you need to declare, I am glorified with Christ. Can you say that with me today? I am glorified with Christ. Because here's a reality, right? Because <clears throat> that y'all sometimes, man, when 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 we don't we don't we don't feel victorious. That sometimes I don't feel victorious. That sometimes, hey, amen. When 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 my day getting the best of me, I know I know. I'm just see. I, I, I understand. There, there's the ultra spiritual people. Every day you're on the mountaintop. Every day, okay, good. That, that's not my existence, right? That's not me. Can Bishop be real? There's some days, amen, when I go to bed and I'm ready to hit reset. <laughs> when I'm ready to just, Lord, Lord let's just let me go to sleep. Let me start, the, let me start tomorrow because today, the day wasn't it. It <laughs> wasn't it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know, I know, I know I'm a pastor, <clears throat> Bishop, and I ain't supposed to tell you that. I'm supposed to sit here and act like every day, amen, is a holiday, every day is Sabbath. I'm supposed to sit here and, and preach to you like when I walk, my feet don't touch the ground. I know, I know I'm supposed to preach like I'm a pie paragon of perfection and that God died and left me in charge. But let me tell you something, man. I, I'm just like you. I am just like you. I need God's grace. I need God's mercy. I need God's love. There's some times when I got to remind myself that I'm saved. <clears throat> Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. There's some times I got to remind myself that I'm already justified. There's some times when the enemy wants to bring up my history, bring up my past, bring up things I've been through, mistakes I've made, shortcomings, idiosyncrasies, impeccadios, habits, uh, uh, ways, uh, any other things you want to call them. That he wants to bring them he wants to heap them on me. And that's sometimes I got to open my mouth and say, ah, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God already cleansed me from that sin. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. And so, and so then, and then, and Paul, let me, let me close. Y'all, y'all, look at me crazy. Watch this now. He says, I'm glorified with Christ. He says, these he also glorified. So Philippians 1 9. Watch this now. Woo, hold me up, Holy Ghost. Philippians 1 9. <clears throat> The Bible declares, right? Talking about our Christ, talking about Jesus. Watch this now. He says, therefore, God also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name, oh, hold me up, Holy Ghost, of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those of earth and those under the earth or everywhere. And that every tongue should confess that D Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Let me, tell you, let me tell you what it means. That word glorify, watch this now. It means to be lifted to a higher condition or to a higher position. Oh my God. So when the text says, watch this now. That because Jesus was obedient to God's purpose for his life and because he was willing to go to the cross, stretch his arms out wide, give his hands to the nail, give his feet to the spike, amen, and to hang on a Roman's cross from the sixth to the ninth hour, amen, and the Bible says, amen, that he gave up the ghost, died for our sins, and then three days later was resurrected from the dead, stepped out on resurrection ground and declared, oh, and heaven and earth have been given unto me. The Philippian writer says, therefore God has highly exalted him. <laughs> Hold me up, Holy Ghost. And that he had given him glory. Amen. Exalted him to higher position. Watch this now. And seated him. Watch this now. On the right hand of glory. Can you say amen to this? Amen. He says, at his name. Amen. Power and authority and all glory and dominion belongs to him. He sits on high. Oh, my God. Jesus sits on high. The heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool and the heavens and the heavens. Heaven can't contain him. Amen. Praise the Lord. He, he's high and lifted up. Oh, my God. And the word says, watch this now, that as God lifted him into glory, the Bible declares, watch this now, that the father said to the son, 
sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies. <laughs> Somebody all shout amen. Until I make your enemies your footstool. Watch this now. So at his name, at his name, the lame walked, the blind regained sight, and the dead came out of the grave. Amen. All because of the power of his name. Now, now that's good. But what about what I'm going through, Bishop? What about what I'm what about when I'm dealing with depression? What, what about when I'm dealing with problems? What about when I'm dealing with the pain? Well, Ephesians 1 20, chapter 1, verse number 20, talked about the demonstration of God's power. Watch this now. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that's named, not only in this age, but that also which is to come. And then in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 6, here's the shout, don't you miss it. He says, amen, that he has raised us up together. To be seated with him in heavenly places. Oh my God. What are you trying to get me to see, Bishop? I'm trying to get you to see is, amen, that when God says, amen, uh, to whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he's also glorified. He's trying to get us to understand that just as Christ, amen, has been exalted, amen, and sits at the right hand side of God, far above all principality, power, thrones, and dominions, and every nation that can be named not only in heaven and in earth you as well sits right there with him in glory hold me up Holy Ghost and so what he's trying to get you to understand is he says when I'm putting on the pressure when you're going through some things you don't understand when you're dealing amen with perplexing issues on the right hand and on the left when you think you can't make it when you think you can't make it through the struggle when you think you can't make it through another day when you think you about to give out and throw in the towel. You got to open your mouth and remind yourself that I've been glorified with Christ. In other words, I sit with Jesus, amen, in heavenly places. I sit above everything that could be named in this earth. I, amen, have this, I have Jesus' name, amen, at my use. And that when I'm when stuff is coming against me and problems are coming out, or oh, uh, when the issues are coming against me, and when the enemy comes against me like a flood, I can raise up the standard and say in the name of Jesus I declare victory over that thing. Can you say yes today? Can you declare today I am glorified in Christ? We don't serve a dead Jesus. We still serve a Jesus hanging on the cross. We serve a Jesus who stepped out on resurrection ground. We serve a Jesus who stepped a took off of his grave clothes and stepped out, amen, from behind the rock. And what are you talking about the rock, Bishop? That rock, anything that separates me from Jesus, I, he's gotten it out of the way. He's gotten my past out of the way. He's gotten my problems out of the way. He's gotten my circumstances out of the way. And he stepped out and said, uh, it is finished, amen, and all power belongs to me. And that same power, Oh, hold me up, Holy Ghost. That same power. See, you got to open your mouth. You got to open your mouth. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you got to stop letting the enemy run rap shot in your life. You got to get him out of your head. You can't fight him in your head. You can't fight him in your thoughts. You can't fight him with your feelings. You can't fight him, amen, using uh, these temporal things of this world. Amen. But the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You got to use uh, the sword of the spirit, open your mouth and declare. I ain't fighting for victory. I already got victory in Jesus' name. I got the victory in Jesus' name. Can you say that with me today? I have the victory in Jesus' name. So we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from a place of victory. And you got to remind yourself, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care, amen, what happened yesterday, but today 
I'm living in victory. Can you say it with me today? Today, I'm living in victory. Can you say it again? Today, amen, I'm living in victory because I've been glorified with Christ Jesus. The same way he stepped out on resurrection round, the Bible says, amen, beloved, he says that if any man be in Christ, he's a, come on somebody, come on somebody, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, amen. I knew that's not who I am. That's who I used to be. That's the dead man. That's the dead sister. That's sister gone. That sister been put in the ground. That sister had a had a eulogy preached over her life. I knew in Christ Jesus. And open your mouth and stop giving the enemy the victory in your life because you refuse to open your mouth and say something. I know, I know, I know, I know. This sounds weird, but I'm telling you. You got to open your mouth. You ain't going to fight this in your head. You can't fix this with money. You can't fix this. Listen, you, listen, you, this, this ain't, this, this ain't, you're not going to fix this problem with the man's uh, 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 tools. You're not going to fix this, amen, with the stuff that this world has for you. You are going to have to use what God has given you. And he's given us his word. And you're going to have to declare. I am a child of God. I don't care what you say. I am a child of God. I don't care what they say. I am a child of God. And then two, you got to declare I'm already justified. Mm -hmm. I ain't, bring up my past. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring up my past. Because all you're going to do is make me shout. Come on, remind me of what I've done. All you're going to do is put see me in a praise. C come on, come on, come on. Remind me what I did five years ago so I can just stand here and get my shot on in the Lord and tell my, look how God has changed me. <laughs> Hold me up, Holy Ghost. Yes. 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 So you bring up my past, I shout. Woo, hold me up. Am I blessing anybody today? When you bring up my past, all you do is create a shout in my soul. Because I know that ain't nobody, didn't anybody get me from who I used to be to who I am today, except Jesus. And you can say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, bitch. But you still got some issues. I sure do. And I can rejoice in that too. Amen. Because for every issue I got, Jesus got an answer. And there's, hey, listen, let me help you, below. Amen. I'm, I, that, God wants me, amen, to have to come back to his throne. He don't want me to have it all together while I'm here. That's some stuff I still got to deal with, some problems I still got to deal with so that I can stay connected to his throne and to his word. This is my victory. Amen. And then finally, remember, you're already victorious in Christ. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, mm. who can be against us? Can you say that with me today, beloved? What then shall we say to these things? Since God is for me. Since God is for me. Come on with me now. Come on, don't be stubborn. Since God is with me, who can be against me? Greater is he <laughs> that is within me than he that's in the world. Can you say, man, it is? Will you make a commitment with me today? Then will you find yourself in certain situations? When you find yourself, man, with more problems than you know how to solve? When you find yourself, man, when you're just going through? When you're going through and you don't know what God is doing, when you when you're going through situations, man, where it seems like it seems like God has abandoned you, will you make a commitment with me today that you'll open your mouth and remind yourself that you're saved? I don't care how this end, I'm saved. COVID, no COVID, vaccine, no vaccine, I'm saved. I know what that means for me. That I don't die. I only change existence. I only walk through a hallway. It takes me, amen, to the place, amen, where God get my reward. Mm, hold me up, Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't let the enemy convince you that you defeated. Remind yourself 
Amen. That you're glorified and you have your victory in Christ Jesus. All right. Listen, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for meeting with us. Amen. For this life changing word. My name is Bishop Eddie Gross, and I just want to tell you that I'm so blessed to have you with us today. I talked a lot about Jesus today. I talked a lot about what it means to be saved. I talked about uh, uh, being called of God and being chosen because we've received that call. Maybe you've not received the call, but I believe that you feel even right now in your spirit that God is calling unto you. You're not listening to this message by happenstance. You didn't just happen to pick the wrong podcast. You didn't happen to come to this website by accident. You didn't happen to get this on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you're getting this by happenstance. This is God calling out to you to remind you that his son, Jesus Christ, died for you. And that all you have to do is to receive his gift of salvation. And once you receive that gift, then you become the chosen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You, you become not just called, you become the chosen. And so perhaps you want more information about how to do that. Listen, I have a resource on our website at equipedestiny.org. If you will go there, there's a button that says, how do I receive Christ as my Savior? And I have the information that you need there right out of the word of the Lord that you can go through it systematically. And there's a prayer to be prayed. And if you mean that, if you mean from your heart, what that prayer says, then according to what the word says, you're saved. And listen, and we don't, we're not going to leave you there. If you want to talk to us or you want us to explain more to you about it, you want us to pray with you about your decision for Jesus Christ, listen, schedule a time. It's right there on the website. Schedule a time with us and we will reach out to you and someone from the Equip for Destiny family will pray with you, will talk with you, and celebrate with you the decision that you've made to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's no decision you're ever going to make in the world and in, in your life that's more important than the decision you make to accept Christ as your Savior. All right? All right. Listen, also, if you have prayer requests, you can submit prayer requests there at our website. Someone with our, our, in our Equip for Destiny family will be praying with you. Uh, meet with us on Thursday nights for Bible study. I can't stress this enough. That we only know these things because we study God's word. And if you want to see changes in your life, you want to see, amen, God move in your life in greater measure, it's time to get in his word. So meet with us on Thursday nights at 7.30 p.m. Uh, there's a Zoom link. We meet on Zoom. You can come in and we're family. We just, we just, you'll love it, man. We just, we're family and there's smiling faces and we have such a great time in the word. But come meet with us. No pressure, no anything. Just come meet with us. Let's get into the word together so that we together can know what God has said to us and about us, and what he wants to do to us, through us, and around us. All right? Meet with us Thursday night at 730 Eastern Time. Amen. For Bible study. Meet us here next Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, same time. Equip for Destiny Church Sunday service. Listen, God bless you. May God keep you. May God continue to smile upon you. And when you find yourself, amen, going through trials and tribulations, open your mouth and say something. All right? All right, God bless you. Again, my name is Bishop Eddie Gross. This is Chris of the, the, the Church, where we are equipping progressive minded people for destiny. Until we meet again, may God continue to smile upon you. May His grace go before you. And may His Spirit, oh my God, empower you to be all that God has declared you to be. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Until we meet again. See you soon. All right.